had to go to a different Bunnings, but I finally found some trays. Yay! So I got 10 trays and an all-purpose slow-release fertilizer. I got my wife's blessing to pick up this Benny Musume. And it has a few pops. I was starting to run low on potting mix, so I went on another Bunnings run with Zach and got this. These are just the cheap potting mix that they sell for $2. And I also get a bag of succulents and cacti mix because I use this for my uh, leaf propagations. As forecasted, it has rained today, earlier this morning. But it looks like it has stopped, but the skies are still gloomy. I hope the weather improves this afternoon so I can take some photos again. Because <laughs> it's been a while since I posted photos on my page. It's a good thing I tried working on the cuttings a few couple nights ago just in time for the rain look at the myrtella in the bowl it's looking pretty lovely right now and the aeonium is pushing out a flower stalk and as uh, aeoniums are monocarpic which means they flower once before they die and it's obvious here because uh, the flower is right dead at the center so once the flower dries out, the plant will die, but in time, before it does, uh, lots of offsets will grow along the stem of the plant. So I'm looking forward to that. For the past few months, I've been giving my aloes, gasterias, and haworthias some tender loving neglect. And it looks like some of them have started flowering now. So I finally had the chance to look at the Myrtilla, the bowl with the Myrtilla in broad daylight and it looks like I made the right decision. It's looking really lovely in this bowl alongside the others. Something to take note though is that lots of the Echeverias are putting out flower stalks for first timers this might look pretty but for someone such as myself who's doing landscapes and I've already seen them before, seen them bloom, they can look rather distracting. I'm still com contemplating whether I want to gather their seeds from the flowers but part of me is feeling a bit lazy so maybe I don't know, maybe I'll just chop them off and harvest the ones that are already ready. Because some of them have already already dried out, but most of the others are still open. Maybe I'll take some time to think about it some more. It has been over a month since I worked on Project Lux. Because as, as you know, um, it was winter when I was working on it, the end of winter. And my plan was to finish it before spring. And now it's spring and most of them should start go getting out of dormancy now. I think, I think that's already happening because take this one for example, this Colorata Branti. The middle is starting to look really nice. It's pretty light in the middle. This signifies new growth. How about this big red? It's pretty green in the center, in the center of the rosette. This tells me that it is starting to actively grow. 
So are there clues from the others? This Mo Mauna Loa is green in the center. So is this Dix Pink. Pretty soon all of them would be growing. So I have to prepare them for it. And when I say preparation, I mean adding some fertilizer around them. This will help them with their growth season, especially the smaller ones that I've just cut. But it looks like it started to rain again. So maybe I'll have to do it at another time. I find this a bit funny. So I have a few afterglows here, which are already growing on its own roots. And throughout winter, they haven't grown much. What I find, I find funny is that, if you remember, I also have these two terminal afterglows. And around the stem, there's lots of pups. And it looks like they have overtaken this ones in terms of growth. So I'm going to leave them on for as long as I can until, until maybe the, the parent plant starts getting even more dry. Because for example, this one, it's already dry up until this point, but the lower parts are still quite fleshy. This means that uh, the pups can still get nutrients from the main plant, from the main stem. And there are even more coming out at the bottom. So it's much faster to leave them attached than plucking them early. This is my recent Beni Musume purchase from Bunnings. It's quite big. I haven't measured it yet. And the good thing, the great thing about this is it has a few pups at the bottom. One is already quite big and there's still a few that are starting to come out. I think there's at least three of them. Let me just get my measuring tape and see how big they are. So the main plant is roughly 15 centimeters or around 6 inches. That's not bad. It's the other Benimusume that I have still quite small. Let me go look for it. So this is the other Benimusume that I have which I purchased sometime in autumn. And from the looks of things, it's only 10 centimeters or about 4 inches wide. I'm tempted to transfer the two, but I think I'll just leave this one here because it already looks settled. So I don't want to further stress this one. Here's another sign that my HFRs are starting to actively grow. So take this pastel for example. The middle area is pretty bright, brightly colored compared to the rest. Usually the light colors tell me it's new growth. I'm getting the same story from this embossed gem. So if you look at the lower leaves, they're quite dark. But the ones at the tip, the, the center, are much more light compared to the rest. So this is a sign of active growth. Another sign of active growth is uh, is when the rosette starts opening up more. So in the past, the outer leaves used to be more cup-like. I'm not sure if I have photos to show them. But now, they are starting to unravel and open wider. The center of the rosette still seems a bit more closed, but in time, I think this would also open up. Just in case you're curious about where I'm leaving my pots right now, some of them, as you can see, are under cover in the shade. Some of them are at the edge of the eaves by my propagation station. They're getting different amounts of light 
depending on how established they are. So some are out in the open. And when they're even more established, so I have some here. The more established ones that I already have uh, exposed for a while are at the back. So as they get more established, I move them out more in the open so that they would be getting more sun. So the reason I have these ones under the eaves and in shade is that I have recently potted them and they need to adjust to their new environment. So in order not to stress them, I keep them here where it's less intense, where the sunlight is less intense. And it's starting to get warmer so they would be more easily su uh, subject to stress. Yeah. Want to say something, Zaki? I'm going to give them a week or two before I move them out in the open. So for now, they're going to stay here where they can adjust to partial shade and eventually full sun. So in two weeks, I'm going to a swap meet and I'm thinking that maybe I could bring some chalk sticks along. Because if you see, ours has gone really thick. So it's time to prune some of them. I'm just going to clip some of the stems. So I'd like to keep most of them because we want, the plan is this whole edge has to be blue because it contrasts nicely against all the other plants. But in order to, to do that, I'll need to get some cuttings so we can spread it a bit more. So I might as well take some cuttings and bring the others, bring some of them for the swap. Here's my tray and my secateur. I'm just going to go for the longer ones at the bottom. They're, they're starting to trail onto the driveway. Yeah, this one. What else? Maybe this one. And... Yeah? Tell me which one next. This one, Zach? This? Yeah. What else? Uh huh. What else? Let's keep looking. Maybe more here. At this side. Yeah, this one. This is quite tall. pretty cool that we just uh, planted a few of these before and now they're growing to a tight clump this is an oscularia deltoids I think really cool there are, there are also some clumps at the back that I want to trim two clumps here and I'll just go for it I'm thinking that maybe this is already enough cuttings to bring this one overflowing tray. I'm also thinking that some of these would be nice to bring because the flowers are really vibrant and this is also a succulent. Uh, this is commonly known as pig face although there are many uh, many succulents that are called pig face like this one, this is also called pig face, a common name, but are, they are different plants. If you look at the flowers, they look quite similar. Although this one is a bit smaller. There are also some small varieties 
but ours haven't flowered yet. In any case, I might, I might start trimming this one. I might also bring some of this pig's ears, the silver pig's ear. These are Cotyledon orbiculata. So I have a lot of them growing over there. I could also bring a couple of these imbricatas because I haven't potted this up yet but they're just laying on the soil. Maybe these two. Maybe this pup which I planted with Project Lux. I'm not sure if I should bring some of these aeoniums. No, maybe not. I'm also done getting cuttings from the pig face bush. I think this should be enough. I've also got a lot of the Aeonium Haworthy, so maybe I should bring this too. So far, I have one tray of blue chalk sticks, one tray of orange pig face, four pots of Echeveria imbricata, and three pots of Aeonium Haworthy. I might add more when the when the day is getting closer, but you know there's still a, quite a while. Maybe I might have more by then. <laughs> 